Welcome to the Indian Gaming Association's The New Normal webcast. My name is Lisa Johnson. I'm the conference manager for the Indian Gaming Trade Show and Convention. I'd like to share a few housekeeping tips before we get started. Everyone is muted by default except for our speakers. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the questioner chat box and they'll be brought up at the end. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Victor Rocha, conference chairman of the Indian Gaming Association. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to The New Normal, your go-to source for insightful discussions on the gaming industry and critical issues affecting Native American tribes across the United States. I'm Victor Rocha. My colleague Jason Giles just slid in. Uh, he's the executive director of the Game Association. A uh, welcome. Uh, today, our special guest and our good friend, obviously, our glorious leader, uh, Chairman Ernie Stevens uh, uh, from the Indian Game Association and Brian Sullivan, VP of Gaming US, uh, Clarion Gaming Group. Hello, gentlemen. Welcome. Good morning. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi, all. First of all, let's, before we start, let's talk about the important thing. How's the weather where everybody's at? It's pretty. It's been pretty beautiful. <laughs> Is well, it good? Perfect here. Yeah. So listen, let's, let's, uh, you know, the reason for the show, you know, there's a couple things. Let's, we just finished our annual trade show in Anaheim, which I think was uh, a success on many, many levels. Um, and then, you know, we have a whole summer of events we can talk about, but I'd like to bring uh, people up. First of all, let's talk about the show. We just finished, uh, chairman Stevens. Uh, how are you doing? Good morning. Good, good. Uh, could good. you, yeah, could you start by sharing your uh, your uh, overall impressions of uh, uh, the show? What what did you think of the show? You know, I love the show. You know, we had a great turnout. Um, you know, the, the one of the things I noticed that you know we were always worried about got so many sessions going on. Then I got our general membership going on, and you know, but it's my understanding that every place was full. I mean, these these panels we had were right on key. The subject matter was right on topic, and Everybody I talked to uh, said that the they, rooms were packed, you know, and, and the subject matter was amazing. So the subject that we're delivering to our constituency, they're loving it and good stuff. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it was a solid show. Brian, how was your experience? You know, you're the, you're the VP, you're the, the secret sauce that people don't see behind, you know, the wizard of Oz type of, uh, uh, a person, you know, you're, you're an amazing, wow. uh, you know, Brian, honestly, I've learned so much from you ab about the industry. Um, how, how did the show go for you? It, it, it went great. You know, uh, following up on what, uh, chairman mentioned it, it, it really went well. It was a little different being in Anaheim again. And, you know, for the second time and last time, uh, that were there, but, uh, but overall, uh, the, the event, the event went well, you know, as chairman mentioned, uh, things were full, you know, we added the new DPS area, uh, on it, which was, uh, which was, uh, which good, you know, a, a lot of great experiences, some new players, you know, Playtech came to me and just kept on, every time I talked to the folks at Playtech, they said, this is fantastic. All of our customers are here. Everything is going very well. So from, uh, from our perspective, uh, things went very well. Well, you know, you you mentioned the DPS uh, um, uh, and uh, the section, and that was, you know, we um, did part of our show. We created a section with uh, um, uh, Clarion and with Aaliyah Steinhardt, um, um, which is basically, you know, it had a different a different feel from the rest of the trade show and the rest of the content, and I, and I really liked it. It had a more of a a European uh, uh, iGaming digital feel. And, uh, you know, the rest of the show was obviously very much in tune to what was important, um, you know, as the content creator. Um, I think we, le we le he leaned heavily into artificial intelligence yeah. and how it's affecting, uh, you know, the industry in, in many different ways. And I think um, the reaction was pretty amazing you know i think that the uh, first of all anaheim i like the venue um um i like the way the hotels are there i like how easy it is to to get to everything i like the venue itself but you know it's not san diego you know san diego i kept telling everyone san diego's our ancestral home <laughs> you know that's what and, i keep telling everyone that's our yeah that's our ancestral the, the biggest thing, Victor, on that, uh, because people keep asking, uh, 
you know, we did fine at Anaheim both years. We were right right around 7,000 people. So that's fine. Was it 8,600 people like San Diego last year? No. But uh, just so everyone on this call at least knows, and, and we let our associate members and, and all the good folks that were on the trade show floor, we're in San Diego for the next two years, 25, 26. We have to go to Vegas, 27, 28 back in San Diego, 29 back in Vegas, 30 back in San Diego. And 31 and beyond, we're trying to secure San Diego right now. And, uh, you know, like you said, Brian and Clarion have taught us so much about this whole, just the way a trade show should be run and scheduled. And, you know, you shouldn't have such a big turnover rate on your floor and all these things. And, and that's really what we're working to on this side. And I've said it a million times, Danny and I are uh, lawyers. We're registered lobbyists here in DC. The trade show, no matter what, would always come at least second or third, if not fourth or fifth, depending on what's going on on Capitol Hill. So uh, we're trying to, like you said, Victor, make this more of a, you know, economic opportunity for everyone. And we've made some bylaw changes. We're still working on those. Uh, so next year will be the first year we can really start to implement uh, some changes so we can get to these full sessions. I mean, everybody was raving about the sessions. It, it, it's possible, Victor, we should probably just do more and more sessions <laughs> and maybe put more of our, our business stuff earlier, you know, just to clear up more space because our board members and stuff don't get to go to that. And if you're down there, if you're voting and everything else, it's tough to to get out and get around. But uh, well, you know, you know, on the, it doesn't help that you guys have have the agenda right near the meeting room too, so everybody knows what they're missing. You know, yeah. maybe if you had like a blank, right? I I actually didn't see that that agenda until the second day. And oh, really? It was huge. You, well, you know, part of that problem was that they had the floor stuff, which is different than the agenda on that right. same sharing that space, so it looked. Pretty overwhelmed, pretty Over intimidating, massive. but pretty amazing too, because we had yeah. so much great content. You know, one of the things that we're doing is that I, we really allowed uh, the vendors to to sell their products, to talk about their products. In and, and yeah. you know, and you know, part of the thing with the education, pro you know, sessions, you say, listen, we're here to educate, we're not here to sell, and then to flip that and say, like, okay, now let's sell. Yeah, you know, but Victor, and, yeah, that that I mean, we. From our perspective, it's not a, it, when we put those things in the tribal leaders lounge and the chairman's lounge, I learned more a lot in those sessions, just walking by on the trade show floor and said, oh, what's this about renewable energy? And I just sat there and listened. Lo and behold, people start coming up to me and like, we want to do energy component at your trade show. This is where we need to be. It's not. I am 100 percent there. At the man. Other place, Absolutely. There's, yeah. there's a lot of. Yeah, I mean, so that kind of stuff can happen. I watched Jason Giles get pumped up about that. Ah, <laughs> so, I saw I mean, that too. Yeah, I mean, this guy is trying to direct traffic, try to figure it out and everything. And then there he is. He's paused. He came totally into that session. I yeah. saw him get excited. I was like, oh, man, who do we got to throw out? You know <laughs> what I mean? All right, who's causing the, the problem? Here, here's the thing. I'd be real hesitant to... To get what did you say, Brian? Who? What's his last name again? Oh, it says right here, Sullivan. I'm sorry, <laughs> Clarion. Wow, all the credit in the world. I've been doing this for for 23 years. Before that, I did it with NCAI. You guys are. I, I'm. I signed a paycheck. You guys are all supposed to be praising me. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, I I had the foresight to be able to get years of service out of Vic Rocha for nothing. Oh wow. You know? And, wow. and and uh, uh, and and even more foresight of this team to to uh, to bring uh, uh, officially on board as conference chairman. That's taking this whole thing to a new level. We do have to figure out to the level possible how we could come together and try to try to get get be able to see some of those things that uh, we don't see because I never leave the membership meeting unless the tribal leaders leave the membership meeting. So those are the kind of things we got to figure out. But joking aside. This stuff is amazing. And and even in Anaheim with the lower numbers, we still nailed it. We still have packed rooms. We still delivered a message and we still continue to resonate from the energy put up by this trade show. Listen, if you guys let me, I would put content on the golf on the golf course. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I there's so hey, much stuff not? that we could talk about. I could think of you know what I was thinking last night, honest, honest to gosh, that that that. Maybe during one, one one of the special events, we could have a session right in the middle of it. So I'm always thinking about how we can have these important conversations in these 
different environments and um you know and and listen you have to give credit to to uh, uh chairman absolutely you know without the leadership and you know having you know we have first of all we have the smallest team in the industry you know what i mean that has the biggest impact so everyone is really good at their job and and you know thank you chairman for the kind words but you know i have learned so much from from brian and ed and what a good team looks like and you know and they've done an amazing job go ahead chairman yes I, yes I, i've i you know I, i'll admit it i'll admit it. i call brian and ed all the time okay so i admit it that that i i don't know but I think that I'm more teaching them or telling them, maybe not teaching, telling them. That's how I feel, but, grasshopper. But, but I yeah. understand. <laughs> what I want to say is this, and and I, I, I don't know why Brian has to be the highlight of this, this no. podcast here. But, <laughs> but, but let me just say this, that I do call him and he does come through for me. And these guys listen to me. But, but, but I think that, you know, again, joking aside, that this team, we help each other. We work together. We sometimes there's a few sometimes that pass the buck, but we catch those ones that pass the buck and we teach them how to work together. So that's over my, and again, my 23 years, I'm not talking about any, anybody specific, Victor. Uh, yeah. What I'm saying is that the, the ones who want to pass around the responsibility, well, they, they stay off to the side or not, not with us anymore. And, and they're small and God bless them. They're good people no, no matter what, but, we work, we accept responsibility and where we have to pass something on, that's because, you know, Brian or Victor or, or, or Jason or Danny, they do it better or they know better. It, it, we're a team. That's the bottom line. And and and, and again, I'm teasing with, with Brian. I, I call him all the time. We're our team. And Brian's a part of that team. And he's one I count on. All you guys that count on. And I think we're successful because we work as a team. And, and, and all that joking aside, I'm just messing with you guys. It, it, Chairman, we're proud to follow you uh, on it. We really do because you, uh, I, I've mentioned to you, Pat, you teach us and you teach specifically my sons on it because I pass the information that you and this team brings to them and they're educated more on on, on uh, Indian country uh, from you. And I thank you for, for that and your team because we the uh, a lot of folks in in my arena don't know what's going on. I stop them all the time. I said we have to follow Chairman Stevens, we have to follow Jason Giles, and we have to follow Victor uh, follow Victor Rocha on it. And that's a full stop on our side. Mm -hmm. I've been following Vic Rocha for a long time. <laughs> Jesus Christ, come on, guys. But you know, uh, uh, associate members and the and the folks on the trade show floor that are putting out the big bucks, you know, for the booths and everything, you know, they they do deserve. Uh, as much attention as we can give them. And I think those sessions on the tribal leaders lounge and, uh, and chairman's lounge are, are probably, you know, Victor, uh, underutilized still. And, and I think people, if you have stuff that they want to move and sell and just get out in front of everybody, you know, I, I think we could really ratchet that up and every hour on the hour have new, you know, which almost is like that now, but I'm saying, you know, if people really want to sell stuff, that's the place to do it not our sessions where people are, you know, trying to get information on specific topics. Well, well you know, you know, and Jason, and, and you know, what we did this year is, is, you know, we did them in 30, 30 minute increments that, instead of one enough. hours, you know what I mean? And, you know, that gives you five minutes to get ready. You know, my people were ready. You come in with your disc. Yeah, I think the only problem I had, I think a uh, 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 terror lever brought in a computer and that took uh, like 10 minutes maybe. And, and so, you know, you will have those problems. And so, but, you know, a good pitch, you know, you have 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a good solid pitch to talk about your product. You have a, a place, uh, um, um, you have visuals, we have screens, um, you know, everyone that did it got really great reactions. Right. I think we and can do, I think it feels like everybody saw what the potential is and how we can do better next time. And I think the 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 vendors were were incredible. I think everyone I talked to said, you know, well, traffic might have been very light, might have been light, not very. They might have been a little light, but um, the quality of people that were there were incredible. We had meetings. Everyone we took meetings with was there to do business. And so, you know, I think we've done a really amazing job in the last six years turning this thing around and making it a, a, yeah. a business. So for company. six six straight years. And this, it's hard to believe, but uh, 
six straight years, the the show the show floor has outdone the previous year. So it's it's like this. I'm waiting for the day when it, you know plateaued. Oh no but, no! But you know, as long as you guys can keep stuffing people on the floor at San Diego, um, I mean, there is a big. You know, I, I you know they have fifty thousand, hundred thousand person convention, so I imagine they can. We we have a long way to go. They had that whole other out. side that we we yeah. haven't even occupied yet. You know, right. I've been there doing like that's why Comic-Con and stuff that used the whole entire right. building. And so that's why I bring in, if we can bring in folks that are not in our industry, like an energy, uh, like a tourism, we had another request for, you know, tourism and entertainment. So that's two more floors, some, you know, and then we might as well look at bringing back a F and B. Uh, I know that's fraught with a lot of problems, uh, you know, but uh, as long as we've got the space, because it's key, if we want to stay in San Diego and, and be rock solid in San, San Diego, you know, we have to be one of those shows that are over 10,000 that where they just can't bump us because the 50,000 guys come in. And, uh, you know, we've got to get up to that level in order to to get solidified amongst the big boys. And then and then we'll have real clout. But I think that's the way to go in the future here is to start bringing in these uh, other businesses that want to do business with casinos. So, uh, and well, you know, I've, I've been giving this some thought and, and I think, you know, especially for something like like the energy track. I think I right. wouldn't have a problem using uh, uh, the rooms on those days when they're not occupied, you know, and especially right. with something like green energy, which is it really going to take uh, the gaming customers away from the trade show floor. And then, you know, once that floor is open, that's a place where everybody business is open. Let's hear, let's negotiate deals. And I think by having something like green energy, which is still important, uh, uh, to gaming and yet won't take away from the trade show floor. I want to do everything I can to make sure everybody's on the trade show floor when they're, when they're right. supposed to be. So that's our science. Right. Right. So, you know, um, there's a lot there and you know what, they, we had some great stuff and you see that there's, there's a lot of tribes already involved in energy, green energy. Um, and, uh, you know, some of them were there at the show. So yeah, we're definitely going to be making that, um a big push next year in san diego and by the way again san diego is our home that's our ancestor home and vegas is great too we always have a great turnout in las vegas you know everybody likes vegas although last time i had like 60 something miles on my pedometer in <laughs> oh. las vegas and, and, and yeah that was that was fun but how is uh you know i, I just i don't understand how ed keeps out doing the year before but I mean, in terms of San Diego, we've got plenty of room, right? Because we're really trying to bolster our associate member program again. And honestly, it doesn't make sense for, unless you're a new company, if you're someone that regularly comes to our trade show, you should be an associate member. Right. So the the, the number of people on the floor should almost match our associate member list. And uh, and I think it's a win-win for everybody. And And a lot of it is, you know, they want us to help them sell stuff. That's not our job here. That's not what we do. But that being said, we want to help you get your product out there in our industry. And, and our trade show is the number one way to do that. And the honestly, the, one of the, I think, the most underrated ways to do it is uh, just to come to our mid-year uh, where you'll get much better one-on-one -on -one, uh, with tribal leaders if that's really what you're looking for. Our mid-year is, is a great opportunity for that if you don't have, you know, 20,000 bucks for a booth at our show. Right, right. Well, you know, last year we were at Foxwood, which was uh, turned out and was a phenomenal show. Uh, this year we're going to be at Tulalip in Washington. Right. Uh, the dates are, how do I have it right here in front of me? September 16th through the 18th. Right. At, at the uh, Tulalip Resort Casino. And, you know, we just were talking yesterday about what we're going to do. And it was funny. I was, uh, I had, left the gym and I called Jason. And I was like, just hear me out. Here's an idea. Humor me. I said, but I'd like to do something on cannabis. And he goes, you know what? Uh, the DA just announced today that, that they're going to reclassify cannabis from a, a schedule one drug. They said it'll still be, uh, uh, um, I forgot what they said. Controlled. Control. Control. It'll still be controlled, but it won't be. Yeah. Right. It won't be uh, uh, at the same level as heroin or stuff like that, too. So, you know, we're going to be looking at uh, cannabis. I talked to my friend Chris Stearns yesterday, and he reminded me that they've been doing cannabis for 10 years. 
-hmm. in Washington. So we're already going to be talking to some of the, uh, uh, he's on some of the committees. He's uh, going to help me get access to, to the liquor and cannabis uh, commission and stuff. And we're going to talk at the compacting, the legalities, the banking, the business, and we're going to have all the tribes up there, you know, by the way, they don't know it yet. Cause I haven't asked them. So, but <laughs> according to my, in my vision, uh, uh, you know, we'll have all the tribes talking about their business and I think it'd be great. We, we've had a great relationships with everyone. So, you know, I'm sure Ron Allen's going to want to talk about what they're doing and stuff like that. So it's going to oh, be yeah. real fun, you know? So chairman, what do you think about the new subject? What do you think about the topic for, for mid-year? Uh, talk, well, you know, I, I'm not a big cannabis guy, but, uh, but I understand the economic part of it and what, how it impacts certainly that area of California and different places right here in Washington, D.C. But I, I like this, the oil and the salve for my knees. I, I'm go, undergoing a knee replacement on Monday. So oh, wow. Anybody got any of that salve, send it my way. Uh, be careful <laughs> where, how you send it. To, uh, so, yeah, I, I think that, you know, the, the biggest thing for us is, you know, is is uh, is our message. You know, the the uh, uh, IGA NCI task force, you know, we we uh, we got to continue to deliver our message and the things that we're monitoring. I won't take you down the list there, but, you know, whether it's court decisions or economic development or different challenges in Indian country, we brought our task force together to work with NCI and their leadership. And we really got to have a strong message there. That that's that's kind of what we're looking for. And um you know, just getting up in that neighborhood again is uh, is really important for all of us. So we're excited about mid year. Yeah, I I, I love it up there. I I'm already. I told my family we're going to take them up early. We'll go to Seattle, you know, spend a couple of days up there. And I told my son we're going to show him the killer whales, and he's like, I don't want to see killer whales because they kill. So <laughs> I had to I had to I had to explain to him. Well, you know, uh, Victor, we had our, our our special guest, the Lieutenant Governor of the State of Minnesota, Miss Peggy Flanagan. And she presented at, at IGA this year in Anaheim. But her message is really about a, a nonpartisan message about the importance of the native vote. And I think that really has to be special or a, a good energy at, at our mid-year as well, because, um, you know, it's grassroots. But I think the last election, I think we made a big difference. I think we can make a big impact on this election coming up. So that message is real important, too, going into our mid-year. Right. Well, you know, and, 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 you know, that's another thing that we should explain. And I'm sure most people know, but I think, you know, we need to repeat was that, you know, there's two things going on here. You know, we have one side, we have the business side of it, which is the trade show. And then we have the government side, which is, you know, the Indian gaming association wasn't started as a trade group for commerce. It was started as, you know, a stopgap measure to 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 help the tribes that were, you know, it was started, you know, with Gail Kingman and 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 at at in her living room and I mean, excuse me, in her kitchen, you yeah. know, and and famous story, uh, um, and so you know we've evolved into what we are, but yet we still have that very 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 important component about that, which is tribes getting together and sharing the information and successes the victories, the, the, the failures uh, of tribal gaming. And we still have that. And, and it's still, still so much, so very important now today more than ever, you know what I mean? So we're still never going to lose that, that political, that tribal side of what this organization is, but, you know, we, we have turned into a, you know, a business trade group also, you yeah. know? And I think it's important for us to be able to, take that business to another level and be able to interact with the tribes throughout the country so that they can take their business mind to another world with and beyond gaming. That's an important factor there. And so, and, and I just, you know, I really think that, that that's our job, our, you know, because economic development was always in our plan, always in, in our, you know, we started out to protect tribal government gaming, to protect tribal sovereignty. And that's our passion but economic development was always a strong message in there. So the business side of that is important. The other thing about it, Victor, is that, you know, what we're able to see in our panels, I've seen a lot of people that have been in the industry, have grown up in the industry. And I always say this, that when, where we used to have to tap into the gaming world and bring experts in, the consultants and everything, now we're the experts of the industry and we're reaching out to be able to try to bring more business. So that's the part where we really can do more 
is the business world. But so we got a lot of economic development people. We got a, pe a lot of people in the regulatory side. We just got to extend ourselves out in that economic development drive. Uh, you, you know, it's, uh, some some of my favorite sessions were, you know, I was trying to br bring up my uh, the agenda. Um, but, you know, I've, I had this one with this uh, lady and I'm, and I'm drawing a blank with her name, but she wanted to do the licensing and, you know, the tribe was a smaller tribe and they really didn't have the budget to send her. So, you know, actually, it's, uh, uh, Jason, I sent you uh, uh, her expense uh, a report, but I said, listen, I still want you to come. She says, I have 25 years of licensing. You know, I've been working with tribes and, and I was like, you know what, come. And I remember I walked into her room and it was packed. And this was a lady that knew her business and she was leading that room and saying, this is what you do. And they were asking questions and writing notes. And I couldn't feel more proud of what we'd accomplished, you know, what we're doing. And that's the type of stuff of, of sharing her experiences of 25 years of licensing. And it was, it was incredible, you know, and, and just for the, the 10 minutes I was in the room, I learned so much you know, and plus, obviously, listen, I don't know anything about that, you know, so I, every, every syllable is a new word for me, but it, it, you know, that's the stuff that I feel that makes me proud. Uh, I think, you know, obviously leaning into sports betting, leaning into online gaming, leaning into, to uh, artificial intelligence. I think that brought revitalize what we uh, are. I think that's what we were feeling on that floor was that sense of, uh, um, discovery you know what i mean i think everyone was really seeing look there's a lot here i don't know and i they were appreciative of that fact that we um really put together a great show when it was a, a team effort but chairman you know when you walk back from that one place to the other to the big the grand ballrooms and stuff and they had the agenda there and it was on the wall i didn't see it until the second day and i just laughed you know it's so funny tino walked up on me right at that exact moment that i was taking it all in and uh it, it was a little overwhelming. Uh, I don't like to see that much content put together on one thing. It should be <laughs> should be split up, you know. But uh, you know, it's still, it was it was pretty amazing. You know, there's nothing I would do different, though. I was very proud of what we did. It's, it's a rocket science that that we're we're just we're not like we're not lost or we're not over. I mean, we're not over organized. We just it's just so much to work with. So it's a blessing to have so many options and so much. But we got to figure out how to how to fine tune it, and so we can get the most of it. Because between the meetings and you know uh, we had an election, and 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 we have all these people on the floor, and literally my step, every step is taken and 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 spoken for from day one right till we go out the door, and to try to get to those booths and try to say hello. I try to get to at least to our associate member booths, and it's almost impossible to do. And that's a good thing, but. We just got to figure out, you know, uh, um, that that rocket science of how to, you know, get more time. Try to get maybe thirty hours out of the day instead of just twenty four. You know, it's just. just oh man, I know. Or get I know. work out of Brian. Yep, Brian. Hey. So what what else you got, Jason? Oh, here, man. All right, I yeah. got that agenda up. We're we're gonna. Um... You know, next year we're back in San Diego and that that'll help our uh, golf a lot because we're going to have two courses out there. Uh, and uh, that the golf is a, a big, big attraction for us and we can do it a lot better in San Diego. That is the one thing that suffers at Anaheim because we have tribal partners near San Diego. So golf will be a, a better experience. And, you know, even there, look, uh, the last golf we had in San Diego was just such a huge hit. We had a couple celebrities there and we have the room for it and the time. And so, you know, the, the goal is to get that golf pretty, pretty high up there on a level where, you know, we might have to consider moving golf to be its own separate event at some point down the future. Uh, if we can make it into a big enough money maker uh, and also just continue to have it to be a charitable uh, type outing. And again, that's something in lieu of freeing up people's time because one of the complaints we get from our folks on the trade show floor mostly the companies that are displaying you know if you come in and play golf on a monday and you have nothing to do tuesday that's a entire night of expenses and fees and everything for all those folks that are coming on the floor uh and, and we, we're sensitive to that we, we've heard people uh tell us that many times and they're either giving up golf or uh giving up extra time on the floor. So we don't want to put people in that position either. 
Uh, so we're going to try to smooth those things over. But, uh, you know, again, uh, moving things around to make that show floor better and better, I think that's helped uh, drive the attendance year after year because they even outsell the floor during COVID was ridiculous. I mean, and 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 the, the amount of people that, uh, you know, were just willing to let uh, 2020 be a complete wash, you know, because of COVID. Uh, was was unbelievable uh, rallying by the industry and and our tribes to just sort of help us out because, you know, at the end of the day, we're still a nonprofit and we're not sitting on, you know, 15 million in reserves or whatever G2E has or AGA or some of these really huge uh, nonprofits, oil and gas nonprofits. Uh, we'd like to get to that level our, ourselves someday, but, uh, you know, we're, we're going to keep working at Victor and, and uh, certainly your help and uh, and working with the industry, getting the word out to everyone. I, I saw we had a couple questions. You know, if, look if if you've got if you've got already got a green energy company and working on energy stuff, go ahead and contact Brian and Ed, and and sign up now. Uh, we don't know what that's going to look like next year, and and people who do this for a living are going to have to figure it out. I'm just throwing out the ideas of, based on what the energy folks coming to me. Uh, all I'm going to have is a Rolodex, and we're going to say sign up. You know, people, we have people on staff and then, of course, working with Clarion, we'll figure out how to uh, make that a unique area to an energy type uh, part of our trade show. And then in conjunction with energy sessions and who knows, Victor, you know, I see people on here liking the, the cannabis idea and giving us names already of folks who we should contact. Yeah, uh, Davey Apondo, who's who's a dear friend. And, and know, actually, I'm in con constant contact with Dave, too. He's a good friend and a great it, resource. You know, it might be time uh, for us again to consider maybe that's that's part of our issues too, uh, because I know that the tribes in California, Washington, and Oregon, the the states that were first in on legalizing cannabis, are already well invested in it. And there's so many tribes out west that are making the same amount, if not more, money on their cannabis sales as as the casino. And and what are the biggest questions we got? I just got a couple of them yesterday when that announcement came that they're going to reschedule uh, marijuana down to a schedule three. The, we got four questions yesterday saying, hey, how close can I sell our cannabis to our casinos? And, uh, you know, or can we start growing cannabis now? And, and it, again, they're asking us this, but I, I think it's more of they don't know where else to turn. They know we're in D.C. and they know we watch all this stuff. But I can tell you those Northwest tribes have been honest for a while that we we should make it part of our regular lobbying efforts. But, uh, you know, again, I'm not going to go talk about stuff I know nothing about. I've been to one of the cannabis shows. Uh, I forget what they're called. Was it, Brian? Those can't the, the marijuana. You forgot already? Yeah. You forgot the cannabis show? Yeah. Yeah. Is that the, what you're saying? Big, the biggest one is MJ BizCon. It's MJ in, BizCon, that's right. right. It's in November, December oh. in uh at uh, Las Vegas Convention Center. So whatever your whatever your preconceptions are about marijuana, if you go to that MJ BizCon, it, it's like a chemistry experiment. You walk in there and it, it, and it's I don't I didn't even see any marijuana, or I did. It's all in tubes and and I mean it's incredible what I what I've witnessed. The packaging but, uh, is is amazing when and you there's walk. There's as many out, medical you know? yeah, and there's as many medical companies have displays as like the the regular marijuana companies. So uh, I was there. Uh, yeah. I was there in the last one. Uh, Jay, it's, were. Actually, it's actually two to three different shows in one. Uh, honestly, right. they, they have cannabis, they have medical, they have packaging. But one of the largest section is just on growing uh, on it. So it's yeah. all cultivating and, and things. And agriculture. Yeah, yeah it's, it's agriculture. It's uh, it's it's more than just, you know, uh, you know, some rolling papers and, and <laughs> things that, that people are. And, and the crowd through. is. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not Victor's crowd. I'll tell you that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Listen, oh, yeah. <laughs> listen, no, just it's a white shoed Brooks Brothers crowd, if anything. So, I mean, I, 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 I am going to go see the dead at the sphere. Yes, I admit it. I'm, I, I'm not, you know, so yeah, I'm going. Yes, yeah, so okay. I live in California. <laughs> <I'm going. laughs> but I mean, those are types of things because, uh, again, you know, we're going to keep trying to grow this, sh this show and, and, uh, you know, eventually 10, 20 years down the road when, you know, I'm long gone, it's, uh, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll be like the way it is at some of these larger nonprofits where it's just, you know, you get that good turnover each year. And, uh, and, you know, in, and IGA is 
of all the nonprofits out there, we're in the most unique position because they had the foresight to buy this building right on Capitol Hill, which when they, at the time they bought it was not a good area. You, you might think, you know, we're on the Capitol Hill and there's all it, but you know, this place was, was never a year round city until maybe late nineties, early two thousands. And then it, the whole complexion of the city changed. And here we are sitting on this incredible property on the National Historic Registry of Places, one of the first buildings built uh, under the Continental Congress in 1797. So, uh, you know, we we really, when you look around, we don't see any other nonprofits with such incredible access to Congress or so close to everybody where we get pop-ins from congressmen and senators just to say hello. I think that's what makes us unique, and uh, and that's what we want to keep for Indian country, and just keep it in here for as long as there's a government till the next January sixth revolution, I guess. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, so, my my, my first time in DC, a, my, my first time nope. in DC, they still had zones. You're like twenty bucks to cross the street. What? Right. <laughs> you know what? So, you know? go ahead, Chairman. Go ahead. Okay, I was just trying to interject. It. Jason was doing pretty good there for a while. So, <laughs> wow, but, right into hey, the tree. That, that that event was like just literally a couple blocks from here, two long blocks from here. But I I wanted to just if I and again uh, a joke to the side. Brian is is just as much as his team as anybody else. I was giving a bit <laughs> sorry, of, Jason. I'm laughing. You know, he got kind of quiet there for a while. <laughs> if, we, if we have any problem, don't worry. We blame Ed Gallo. So yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh poor Ed. He'll get to that ten thousand figure that we blame. Poor him. Ed. <laughs> But but here I think that the one I wanted to just tell you just quickly I I attended the uh, commissioner training, and it's really really a valuable tool. You know our folks at Zion helped coordinate that, and and those those commissioner training folks. It's not like the old training where you just people sign up and, and get their certificate and you know have fun at the conference. They come and they learn and they and they they interact and they work together and they share knowledge. They share strategy. So. You know, uh, you know, Liz Homer was doing the one that uh, is is a is one of the finest lawyers in in Indian history, in my opinion. Billy Davis is one of the trainers that has worked for us for years. Those are just two people, but those people are learning too because the folks in our commissioner training, guys are all experienced, young folks, elder folks, you know, men, women, different regions. They all share their experience. So the commissioner training at the Indian Gaming Association is one of the most valuable tools of continuing to keep Indian country strong and keep Indian country moving forward and sharing our knowledge, how to protect our industry. So I'm really excited about that. I just wanted to get that plug because just meeting those folks is, is so important to me and it inspires me to continue to do my job. Thank you. Hey, Chairman. So what, what are you doing this summer? You know, what, what are the shows do we have now? I know in June, we have the Western Indian gaming conference. Uh, I'm going, I'm going to that. Uh, I want to go ahead of time to to do a little uh, be on the ground to do some preparatory work for our show. You, you, do we have OIGA usually and in, in Washington, right? That's usually yeah. Washington's in yeah. June. OIGA is usually in July, right? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. It might be August. Yeah, this year it's August twelfth to the fifteenth. And then again, IGA mid year is going to be in. Tulela. Uh, yeah, uh, to light up. Well, Victor, look, there it is, September sixteenth through eighteenth. That's to, yeah, to, to, to light up. Yeah. But we got those big monster uh, 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 RNC and DNC uh, 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 coming up too. A very important point. It's an election year. Yeah. That is very important. You know, I uh, was working with G two E on the agenda, and that's one of the things that I did is I put in a get out the vote. I think we also have a, a, a G2E in November. So we did do a get out the vote. We'll have one more crack at, at, at our audience and all that. But I think to me, you know, the more we talk, the more I realize that we just don't have enough time to do everything at mid-year. You know what I mean? We should do something on get out the vote. I mean, we do have the tribal agenda and, and I know it will be done there, I think. Um, but I think, you know, the response that we're getting to uh, the cannabis is uh, really really positive and reassuring i think you know we're on the track there but i'm really really excited about the green energy uh track my brain is just exploding on the things that we can do and things we can be 
and what we're going to bring to the industry. So uh, especially with the tribes and casino green energy, all the gas stations, all this. So I know with my tribe, my personal experience, I know how important, and we do talk about the stuff in green energy. And as a matter of fact, we had a meeting on Sunday and, and we were talking about it. So, you know, it's part of the the, the daily conversation at Pechanga. Yeah, Victor, the, my last job uh, uh, working in California, I lived in Temecula, and my baby, she was, uh, uh, I had two girls in high school there, Temecula Valley, but my baby was in junior high. Now she's a professor at the university. She's Her name is Dr. Lois Stevens, and she she is an uh, uh, environmentalist. She has a, a PhD in geography, and um, uh, my the older daughter ha had has been building her family and as a candidate for a PhD, but their environmental and tradition and culture and empowering women in the business world. So these these two young ladies are, are doing everything they can to help other folks in the field of environmental and education and women in business. So, so the, the, those are, are important parts of our world today. So uh, the, um, you know, the uh, uh, protected mother earth is a giant, giant responsibility for us. And for us to be able to move forward in this world, but still protect Mother Earth is a very, very important tool. Well, listen, that's 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 what separates us from the from the other groups, and you know what makes IGA so unique is that we can talk about stuff like that, and it's part of our mission, not just talking points, but it's what we do and the way we live, and uh, again, part of our daily conversations on the reservation is very important. Hey, Chairman, I just noticed someone says, uh, uh, Joni Clark says, love your idea of expanding green energy. Uh, offer my background as a forerunner with John Denver's Windstar a Foundation with uh, Bucky Fuller, the Rocky Mountain Inst Institute. But she mentions she worked with the great Chairman Charlie Columby on health and wellness at Rosebud. So there's a name I haven't heard in a while, huh? Yeah. yeah. It, you know, Charlie... Charlie, you know, is passed away. He's a former yeah, chairman he did. for the Indian Gaming Association and, uh, you know, former chairman, our president at Rosebud and one of our mentors and friends. And so it's good to hear his name. Charlie. Yeah, me too. Made me smile when I saw his name. Uh, thanks a lot, Joni. Uh, you know, we'll be talking more about this. Uh, reach out to us. Um, you can reach out to Brian Sullivan. Um, he will uh, put his information out there, but um you know, it's still in the infancy stage. Uh, I will be uh, giving more attention. Like you said, we have other shows to attend. The chairman has this incredible travel wanderlust almost, you yeah. know. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing, is, though, is my poor wife, she's going to have to get to know me again because I have a knee replacement on Monday. So oh, wow. I'm uh, 30 days at home, and she's not going to like that. My grandkids get, think I get in the way, too. <laughs> so home sweet home but i'll be back on the road the first part of june as soon as the doctor clears me well listen i i'm glad you're finally doing it i as as you know your personal friend and stuff i know what you've gone through and, I, and i'm glad you're doing it and might as well do it now so all these conferences we're talking about you won't see them at you won't see them in washington you won't see them in i'll be oh i got let's talk about what we're not going to see ernie this summer I'll okay i think that's where we should do it <laughs> Just but you know, the congratulations. Listen, you, you need to do it. You'll be fine by G2E. You get it done now. By the time you get to G2E, you know, you should be able to walk it around. And uh, I saw Jody Delasio, she just had uh, knee surgery and she was getting along. She was a month into it. And she says that, you know, she's feeling better. She's feeling stronger. So, you know, that's positive, right? Yeah, it is. If, if you can get surgery, that's way better. But I have nothing to operate on in my knee. That's why they got to replace it. So surgery is about is about a uh, you know two to four weeks and then you, you uh, this is a brand new knee but it's it works I've had it done on the left side and I can't wait to get rid of this cane. All right, I'm going through the. Um... Yeah, that's about it, Victor. I mean, again, there's a lot of folks here energized by the the energy yeah. stuff. I'm gonna look up you know that renewable energy summit in Aspen. I was doing that while we were talking here. Uh, I didn't see any. Uh, information on it yet for 2024 but yeah those are some of the shows you know we're gonna have to probably hit brian like i said i got people on staff that I'd, I'd like to send out with brochures and whatnot and hit those kind of shows and pass out our brochures that tell them to come to indian gaming 2025 uh, in san diego and uh 
and get ready for that. And we've got plenty of time to do it. It's an election year. Uh, so the Congress is going to be a little bit on the slow side, if not the downright, uh, you know, <laughs> molasses uphill side. <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, it's important that we we get this stuff uh, out there and, and get it in the Indian country. Because, again, not to beat a, a dead horse here, but that, that infrastructure bill, there's so many hundreds of millions of dollars in grants. And some of those tribes are taking advantage and getting themselves off the grid, off of state utility uh, sources and, and just keeping it all on the reservation. And a lot of those projects just they, they you lose money on them and it wouldn't be possible unless you have these grants. And uh, and that's what a couple of tribes at our show did on the tri uh, the chairman's lounge and the tribal leaders lounge showing, look, our, our entire reservation is powered by, our, you know, wind, solar whatever else we can develop on our reservation and it's all collected and we all keep it stored in batteries. I mean, I couldn't believe everything that they're doing mm. and it's all made possible by grants and you just got to be aggressive out there. And trust me, that helps the state utility guys too, because uh, in, in most states, their power uh, requirements are increasing, yes. uh, especially with more and more computers and AI coming on and, and all of that stuff. It, it takes a lot of computer power, which is energy. And, uh, you know, so they're happy to have less people on the grid. You know, they're not going to miss the money. That's for sure. So, yeah, well, you know, that's 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 what my tribe was talking about on Sunday was, you know, not only doing solar, but having battery storage. And they seem to have really gotten the message about, you know, green energy and and, you know, it's not enough to have solar up on your roof, but you have to have a place to store it too for yeah, really I mean, to be effective. It really uh, it just made me realize, you know, in a very short period of time, I mean, three to five years, we're going to turn around and be like, what the hell happened to combustible engines? And, uh, you know, it's going to happen like that overnight. And uh, for good and bad, I know a lot of areas are not going to be uh, as, as brought up to speed. And so you're going to have like that huge disconnect like we did in the early stages and still stages now of the internet and connectivity. And some people just don't have access to reliable internet technology. Well, you know, we've got to stay on this road of of getting of bringing lifting everybody up and getting everybody on the same type of uh, power system because it's just better for the environment. And and once people realize that, you know, uh, you get over this obsession with a combustible engine car and the way it feels and sounds, you know, we'll never remember it. <laughs> so oh man, you know, a V8. I'm sorry. I sure missed the know. clippity clop of the old horse and buggy. I, don't you miss that sound? In the morning, <laughs> I, I, I really this is my 6.1 Hemi. I, yeah, that's right. Hey, GTO, oh, man, F 484 rat, you know right. what I mean? There's nothing like that engine, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, sorry, sorry about the boomer in me coming out. I apologize, <laughs> you know, we still have a nostalgia for the combustion engine. Listen, without can you imagine Bruce Springsteen writing about electric vehicles? <laughs> yeah. you know, where would Bruce Springsteen be on electric vehicles? You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I, I, Come I, on, girl, grab your extension cord. Yeah. We're gonna go ride. You know what I mean? <laughs> the Beach Boys. You go find my four hundred nine. That's right. <laughs> my daughters, my daughters haven't given me a hard time about my uh, my uh, Dodge Challenger. But uh, they have assured me that if I come home with a, a Hummer, that they'll push it over the hill. Um, <laughs> but, but hey, Victor, if I could just just a couple of quick points uh, for the show is I wanted to a couple of the highlights of the show was honoring. We could uh, Senator Campbell. Oh, wow. he, he's not sick, but he, he he's uh, slowing down. You know, he's in his 90s and uh, uh, early, very early 90s. I'll say that before I get in trouble. But but so but he got to uh, attend his honoring. We honor him with the uh, Rick Hill Tewapto Sovereign Warrior Award. And he came to us like in a Zoom call like we're doing now. And so we gave that honoring to him. And then uh, I'm I'm going to be grounded for the surgery, but uh, Jason's going to take the award out to him and visit him on his ranch uh, this month sometime. So that was that was big and important as we honor Tim and, and, and uh, Rick in, uh, in that award. The other uh, big award was the uh, Lifetime of Achievement for retired Chief Executive Melanie Benjamin. Uh -huh. You know, she's a mainstay in, uh, for, in the Indian Gaming Association and a longtime tribal leader that with and beyond gaming has taken on a lot of battles up there in her neighborhood. And But yet it's always been with us throughout the country supporting tribes and gaming as a whole. 
So Chief Executive Melanie Benjamin is soon to retire. So we we honored her. And then a little small honor, and I just wanted to tell this one. Uh, uh, my mother used to hang out with this lady in L.A. back in the old days in the 50s and 60s. Her name was Winnie. Her name is Winnie James, and she's 90 something years old. And and uh, she was involved in the old basketball leagues during the relocation era. All the Indians played basketball, played softball. We had powwows. And those people were mostly people that, oh, and then they had churches, two Indian churches. And and uh, 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 they they always, all we had was each other in those days. And she's kind of one of those ones. She was kind of big sister to my mom. And, and so we honored her. But she remembered my dad, my parents are divorced. So they played in separate basketball leagues. And uh, but A.C. Green from the Los Angeles Lakers gave her an honorary Hall of Fame membership into the National Indian Athletic Association Hall of Fame. So that was one of the highlights. And another one was the the, uh, the Imagine This Awards. Uh, I, I forgot. Oh, they were uh, they went to uh, 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 Melanie Coffin uh, from Soaring Eagle, Sag Chip and Charles Montauk from Paradise Casino in Fort Yuma Gushan. And unfortunately, uh, for me, I couldn't make it. We had a big election going on, and that election, uh, uh, um, Andy Ibona, our incumbent treasurer, was defeated by Justin Barrett from uh, uh, um, uh, Oklahoma, and so he's our new city treasurer. And then <coughs> uh, Dave Bean, our incumbent vice chairman from Puyallup, he held off uh, uh, um, um, uh, and, uh, uh, James Siva, from, uh, yeah, California. James Siva. And, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, Dave, Dave will, uh, uh, will hold that position of vice chairman. So, you know, we had all of that going on. Then in a nutshell, though, I couldn't make it because it, so you gave these uh, recognitions to the for the uh, 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 Danny Signs Award uh, in my in my uh, booth. But but uh, uh, folks are a little disappointed. But I, you know, I do the best I can. So so I drove over and met uh, Melinda's tri or uh, uh, Melinda Coffin or Melanie Kaufman's tribe at Soaring Eagle, Mount Pleasant, Michigan, and had a big dinner with her staff and her tribal council and presented her the award last week at, in her community. So she they were we really had a nice time. And, and my grandmother went to boarding school in that community a very long time ago. So we really had a nice trip. And I think everything culminates and we just pull these things together to what, what we do. So it really was a, a, a nice trip. These recognitions are for iconic folks who are keep working hard. And, and the bottom line is our executive work, board got their work done. It was a good show. And, you know, Chairman, you know, the that was a, a, a big election. I know everybody was really, really nervous about it. Um, it was a good election. And, you know, you can't be everywhere at once. But I know the guys that imagine this, they're, they're good people. So. Uh, mm -hmm. But of course, you're going to make it up because that's who you are. So, Jason, let's wrap it up. It's uh, we're close to the end. What did we yeah, learn today, it. Jason? What did we learned. We learned it was a great show. And we couldn't do it without Brian. We yeah. couldn't do it without Brian. And that we hope, Brian, you get out of that sauna. Is that where you're at? And look at his <laughs> background. Connecticut. I'm Connecticut glad that you're awesome. here, that you didn't skip your sauna appointment, and that you decided to do it anyhow. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir. All joking <laughs> aside, I'm having fun. No, me too. <laughs> it's great fun. Yeah. And then, uh, by the way, Chairman, thanks for flexing with your guitar up on the wall. We don't think we didn't notice. Well, yeah, you know, I, I, I've uh, I've asked, asked my wife if I could learn how to play guitar, but she said she's declined because she said that's not the problem. The problem is if I try to sing, she doesn't want oh, to hear wow. it. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. That guitar was given to me by Max Os the late Max Osceola, who we lost during during the uh, COVID era. But the uh, Seminole folks and everything, they they gave me this guitar. So that's a uh, that's a um, uh, a Seminole hard rock guitar they gave me years ago. So got yeah, very excited about that. And, and then of course uh, Stanley Crooks, the uh, late chairman from Shakopee, overlooks my my uh, office every single day with his picture and his headdress and. So we always have that blessing too. Yeah, you know, Chairman, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, Rick and Tim Wapato, and I think that's one of the, you know, the beauties and the sad thing about getting older is that you know you see your friends be memorialized, but you know there's still our friends and there's still people and human beings, flesh and blood that we carry in our hearts. So you know we're very fortunate to. I remember legends are our friends. You I know remember I mean? like it was yesterday, Victor. I was sitting in my chamber at the Oneida uh, Tribal Council. I was newly elected. 
And I remember Tim and Gay and Rick coming in there and telling us about this this crazy idea that we could be, present a, 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 a presence in Washington, D.C. And they said, all we need is some salary, some staff, a job, and some computers, and, you know. Tables, some chairs, coffee yeah. maker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they did set a little more sophisticated than that. But I remember that. And and here we are. You know, I, I just, when they said that we could buy a building, you know, and, and uh, I was like, I didn't know what they're talking about. But I did whatever they wanted me to do. I followed them. I followed in their footsteps. And, you know, we continue to. When we when we expanded this office, I stayed up here in the old school part, you know, where I used to stay in the corner here. Now I have a full office nowadays. Well, listen, according to me, you, you can't honor Gay Kingman enough. I think if oh. we did an honoring every single event, it still wouldn't be enough, you know. So, uh, Jason, is that it? Chairman, first of all, yeah, listen, thanks it. so much for coming. We appreciate having your presence. You know, uh, it was a great show. Um, we have a whole year of events. You know, we even start thinking about Barcelona. We have to think about what that's going to be. And that's in January, a little earlier for ICE. So, you know, tribal gaming. I mean, look at, we're talking about Europe already. You know, we're having a presence. I want to have a stronger presence in Europe. I want to have a place where tribes can go and, 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 mm -hmm. You know, maybe we should be talking about an international office. You know what I mean? I mean, eventually, I don't see why that's not out because we have grown from little bingo halls to giant mansions of gaming. So there's no reason why, you know, we're not taking this thing globally. And along with Elon Musk, we should be the first casino on Mars. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm saying it. Listen, yeah, just getting it out there. Porch hey, Creek will do back it. Back up for a second. Porch uh, Creek. Come yeah. on, this RFP, come on, let's get it out to Tahiti. Yeah. Let's send it. We'll be the first tribal casino on Mars. Washington Indian Gaming, Oklahoma Indian Gaming, DNC, RNC, Mid-Year, uh, G2E, and get out and vote. Let's, let's just go there for now. We'll think about Mars after a while. Listen, it is the red planet, so it just makes perfect sense. That's all I'm going to say, okay? That's it. All right, everyone. Listen, okay. thanks, ja, uh, Brian, Chairman. Thanks so much. Jason, Great. thanks a lot. Hey, you guys, we'll, we'll see you next week. We're back on track again. Right. We're all recovered and stuff. So we'll see you uh, uh, next week. Thanks a lot, everyone. Excellent. Bye. Guys, good to see you. Thanks. Take care. Bye, all.